So why form-based code? Because that, after all, is why we're here. Um, form-based code helps you to reestablish a complete sense of place. And from my point of view, one, you can use cars as a proxy for density, but part of the reason that that fails is because if I can go any place when I'm in my car, I'm going to go to the most charming place that I can find. I'm going to go to the place that offers me the best experience, the best quality of life, certainly the best merchandise mix. But a lot of times, when we're going shopping, we're not really in pursuit of stuff. We're in pursuit of experience. We want to have a cup of coffee. We want to have lunch with a friend. We want to, we want to mooch around a bookstore. You know, I don't really need a book when I stop at Joseph Beth. I just drove past and thought, oh, wow, I wonder what's new. Um, so you have to make your place very desirable. You have to make your neighborhoods a pleasant experience. And that form-based code helps you do that. One of the things that I think is most important about form-based code is that it suggests that your building types should be human scale. And I think one of the things that has made our society less gracious and has made people less comfortable is that so much of our architecture now, so many of our places are oversized and isolated. Human scale architecture, good proximity to the street, cars behind instead of in front so that I'm not faced with a sea of parking, good transparency on buildings so that when I drive past that Kroger store in Walnut Hills, I can see in instead of seeing that, that wall of block. And I've, I, I have said before, I am a defender of Kroger. They're my hometown grocery, but man, oh man, they build ugly stores. Um, and so all of those are things that, that are within the community's control based on form-based code. On the other form of code, which is called, is it Euclidean, guys? Yes. Thank you. I'm not a planner. Um, on, Euclidean co on Euclidean codes, only use is defined. This area can have a church, and this area can't. This area can have manufacturing, and this area can't. What it looks like is beyond your control. And I am all in favor of getting control back into the hands of the communities, because guess what? When I go home, you're still going to live there. So it enables you to reinstall or reestablish a complete place, mixed use. We can't build mixed use right now in most of your main streets. We aren't allowed to put residential over retail. We aren't allowed to put office next to residential. Our, our zoning oftentimes makes that impossible. And yet, for the success of your main streets, for the success of your neighborhoods in many cases, that's exactly what you need. Um, over the Rhine, it's all about mixed use. And that's part of what gives it so much energy. We're not, over the Rhine doesn't go dead at five o'clock when everybody leaves the industrial park and goes home. Um, in a neighborhood like over the Rhine, you can drop off your dry cleaning. You can't actually, because I didn't put a dry cleaner in there, but they might have one now. But you can drop off your dry cleaning, walk to work, stop for a drink on the way home, and then get a sandwich to eat at home, and you never had to get in your car, and all those uses are allowed to lie next to each other. Um, walkability, of course, and community character. You get to decide what your neighborhood looks like. Not developers, not the city, you. You get to decide your building heights, you get to decide your transparency requirements, you get to decide those things, and I think that's important. It levels the playing field for developers because it gives them very clear guidelines. It tells them what the community wants and will accept, what the city has signed off on, and therefore what they can build. Developers like that. They like predictability. They're like little kids. Tell them what the rules are, and they will either play within them or not. But they really like knowing what the rules are. Um, it enables you to balance options because it enables you to put retail next to office, next to residential, if that's the community's wish. It preserves right by giving the community its, the right to its own neighborhoods. And as I frequently say, you own your neighborhood. And it's very important for you to exercise your ownership rights. And it, it um, and this again, this, Ed Starkey said this, it, it, uh, it's, it's very fine-grained in the way that it's applied. You can go block 
by block, and I don't want to get into too much trouble here because I know Opticos doesn't actually say that, that form-based code can be broken down block by block, and, and, and truly it can't, but you can go zone by zone, and you can decide that you're going to have this application and then behind it you're going to have that application. If you look at a traditional zoning map, you'll see big tracks that are given to defined uses, and it's very hard to renegotiate the uses of those tracks. And, and in form-based code, you have much more opportunity to define the character of your neighborhood, and you have many more tools to preserve that character.